Hey gang, I have just spent three weeks in the United States after being over two years living abroad and I thought that I would do just a final video about my final thoughts in America of the three weeks I spent there about what's changed kind of looking one two subcategories of my overall impressions and then just some stuff that was kind of personal to me about being back in the United States. So starting with the overall impressions, and the first little part of this is just very subtle. I honestly would not have noticed these if I had been living in the United States, or at least I don't think I would have if I'd been living there for the last two years. But being gone and now coming back, I did notice these very, very subtle changes. So a lot of the time that I spent in the United States was in rural East Tennessee. And in those counties, going into places such as Walmart, the grocery stores, uh, little fast food restaurants such as, um, well not little, but McDonald's and Burger King and, and Taco Bell and some places like that, is what I really noticed is that the workers during the daytime that were working there were older. These people were in their 60s, even in their 70s, uh, should be on Social Security, should be retired, and there weren't a lot, I'd say less than 20% of the workforce in these places were actually under 50 years old. So that was something very different from when I was in the United States before. And the only thing I can attribute this to is that the cost of living and inflation has gone up so much that these people aren't able to live on their fixed incomes and are needing jobs. And that was kind of another very subtle thing that I noticed was that all of these places, every place that I went to of these low skilled entry level type jobs in America were hiring. They were not only hiring, they were paying twice the wages that they were when I left. So in this rural area of East Tennessee, really pretty much employers in those categories paid minimum wage, federal minimum wage, or just slightly above it when I left. And now these jobs were paying $15 an hour to start with no experiences. The Taco Bell that I went to was offering to pay for people's college uh, if they would work there during college. So it was incredible benefits and much higher wages. The wages had doubled at these low skill things compared to when I was there two years ago. So those were two really big subtle changes. Another one that I noticed, again in the rural areas, is what I call food trucks. So basically people who have food trucks or carts that they would pull up into parking lots at grocery stores or department stores, um, also at Walmart, and they were just setting up these, these, these food trucks selling hot dogs and hamburgers, and a, there was a taco truck and a pizza truck. And at one place, I'd gotten a coffee at a McDonald's and I had to be on the phone with an attorney who'd gotten back with me. And so I was in the car for about an hour and all of a sudden three different food trucks pulled up and set up shop in this parking lot right in front of uh, what used to be a goodies which was like a clothing store and people were coming and eating there so i had never seen this really in the rural areas i had started seeing one or two when i first left the united states but this was just like i guess entrepreneurship on fire people trying to do something to make a living and people were buying it people were going to these local food trucks The second biggest overall impression I had, and I've talked about this in another video where I talk about culture shocks, is the cost of living and inflation that has gone up in the United States. Prices in many cases had doubled in many areas. When, when I left, things that had kind of stabilized were dairy products, cheeses, milks, things like that at the grocery store, but everything else was up across the board. At least 30% in a lot of cases just doubled. A cup of coffee at a local store, which would have been a dollar when I left, is now a dollar 99. So the prices have just really, really gone up. I'm not gonna go into the inflation too much in this video, other than to point it out because I talked about it in another video and it probably deserves a video all unto itself.
So when I first got back to the United States, and I talk about this in another video I did about culture shocks, because I had been away from hearing English being spoken all the time, when I was sitting in restaurants and coffee shops, I was very much tuned in to people talking English around me, and I couldn't tune out the conversations. And so in those conversations, as well as some anecdotal conversations that I just had with people that I've met, there was this sense of, I almost want to call it depression or hopelessness. There was a lot of people talking about how they were struggling to get by, that the prices had increased, and even though sometimes those at the lower end, their wages had increased, they were spending still double what they were before, and it's simply the increased wages simply were not keeping up with what the cost of living was. This was even exasperated more in the middle class and the working class. I talked to some attorneys who were solo practitioners that I had worked with, that I had to take care of when I was back, and many of them were having to cut back on staff because jobs that they were paying before, in, again, these are remote areas, these people could go and work at McDonald's and make as much as they had for these skills that they had been paying before, and those would have benefits. So they've had to up their game tremendously, paying basically now for employees what they would have paid in a metropolitan area before. And again, their costs have gone up and their wages had not gone up because a lot of them, I, I found that they were telling me, was that even though if they raised their costs or if they hadn't raised their costs, these are people making good money, the problem was is that the clientele, because they were in consumer law, could not afford to pay their bills. And so you've got increased costs in staff and other costs. People can't afford to pay you, so a lot of jobs ended up being lost in there or transitioning to more lower skilled stuff. One other overall impression that I had with the United States going back was before when I would leave the country and tell people about it, people were kind of like, okay, that's interesting. But when they found out I was moving or leaving the United States permanently, people were like, have you lost your mind? You know, you're crazy. Nobody could understand that. I did a whole video at one point on that about how nobody understands. But this time when I was talking, people would ask me, I was, you know, getting ready to go to another country. I've been living in the Philippines and in Serbia and Albania, Thailand. This time when I would bring that up and people would hear about it, I started getting all kinds of questions. And what I found was that a lot of people had actually been researching going abroad. Now these people weren't serious about it yet. They weren't ready to pull the trigger, but a lot of them, especially those over 50, had started looking at that because they were getting ready to become on fixed incomes. And they did not think that the money that they had was going to be able to keep them afloat in the United States. So a lot of them had started looking at Latin America and other places like that. And I just found it so different than before. And this wasn't one or two conversations. I probably had probably six or seven conversations with people that were thinking about this. They'd been watching YouTube videos and stuff. So it was really amazing to me how much that's changed just in the last two years of people becoming aware of geo-arbitrage and being able to spend their US dollars or other foreign currencies in places that have a lower cost of living. So my final thought on the overall impressions that I had from the United States is gonna leave on a positive note, and it is how great the United States could be if things get changed and people get back on track, and especially the government gets back on track. Basically, since our Civil War for 160 years, Republicans and Democrats could not screw up the United States, although they tried very hard in both parties because we had this wonderful geography, these wonderful natural resources. We had a very large population that is very well educated, is highly skilled, um, and can make great workers. We have peace in the United States from any sort of foreign threat because we've got ocean moats on either side, friendly neighbors to the north with mountains and great lakes that protect us. In the south, other than maybe migrant, economic migrants, no army's gonna be able to cross the deserts and the rivers without the full force of the United States being able to stop that. So we live in this wonderful protected thing with these great natural resources that we can use 
to turn the country back around. And I hope that things happen in the United States and it starts getting back on track, starts getting away from all the silliness that government is trying to do, and starts focusing again on the middle class and the working class, which is really what makes America great and can make it great once again.